Hey everybody, how are you doing today? I am Eric Anderson. This is the Grid Guru Session. And this is where we take, this This whole thing is about us taking the 421 grid system and applying it to the drum set. But as you can see, I'm at my drum set, but I'm spending more time on the practice pad because I want to share with you one of the really cool things that the grid, the 421 grid system can do for you regardless of what kind of music that you like to play and what percussion instruments you play. So uh, straight up, the goal of this video is to introduce some, uh, a, a, is to introduce one way that you can use the 421 grid system to start to blow your chops up. And here's, here's why I want to go in that direction, because here's the simple truth. We do not play practice pads and drum sets and cymbals and things like that. What we play is we play drum sticks and we play like the pedals. Ah, man, that actually hurt, right? That's the truth of the matter. What our hands and our feet actually engage are the instruments that we truly play. And why this is very, very important is it comes back to this lesson that I learned about 11 years ago when I was taking lessons with Bill Bachman. If you're struggling with playing a particular piece of music with just the way your hands and your, you know, your wrist and your fingers and your thumb manipulate the sticks to where you get the sounds, you get the phrasing the way that you want it to be. If you're struggling with that on just one practice pad, when you go to move it around a set of tenors, or you go to move the idea around your drum set or across uh, two or more timpani, uh, timbales, anything like that, where you actually have to move the stick in a horizontal fashion, right? While also moving the stick in a vertical fashion as you're playing it, that horizontal motion is going to make it so much more difficult to execute because you still have not mastered the vertical motion. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you one idea about how to use the grid to further build your chops up. So we've been using this grid that I did like a samba rhythm over and uh, or with, and then I kind of orchestrated that same grid pattern, that accent tap pattern around the drum set. So today what I'm doing is I'm playing that same accent tap pattern. But what I'm doing different this time around is that I'm putting a flam on every single accent. So when you look at the blue rhythm in particular, and you'll see that there are accents on, on the beat and on the end of the beat, that makes, actually makes for a really big challenge because as my right hand is playing those accented notes, my left hand has to play the grace note of the flam followed by the 16th note that comes after the flam. So in essence, what happens is in the blue rhythm, like in stage one, the hand that plays the grace note, which for me is going to be the left hand, actually has to play a full measure of 16th notes, right? So the blue rhythm would look like this. It'd be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. The green rhythm winds up reversing or uh, the, yeah, reversing the order in that now the right hand plays the, the grace note of the flams and then the taps on the E's and the U's. So now that one, so then the green rhythm would look like this. It'll be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And then when you get into the red rhythm, you have just a flam on the, on the end of the beat. So the left hand is actually playing three of the four 16th notes uh, in each rep. So now that one would look like one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And then finally the yellow rhythm is playing on the E of each beat, which then pushes the, hand, the right hand to play three of the four 16th notes over each beat. And it sounds like this, one E and a, two E and a, three E. So at these slow tempos, it doesn't sound that difficult, but I want to be very straight up with you. Trying to get to 100 beats a minute and doing 16th notes, a full measure of 16th notes at 100 beats a minute has been quite the struggle for me. And I'm very, very excited that I actually got to that level. And that's what this grid system is going to do is that if you get on this grid long enough, 
you're going to run into a sticking pattern or an idea that's going to force you to dig in and figure out how to play better. And that's the ultimate goal of everything that we're doing here. So now what I'm going to do is if you take a look up here, uh, I'm going to go through this grid, putting flams on all the accents, and I'm going to do this at 50 beats a minute so you can see how the whole thing is constructed. So let me get my metronome going here. There we go. So one, two, three, e, and a go. So three, red, yellow, blue, green. Red, yellow, blue, green, red, yellow, here we go. We're in stage three. All right, so there it is at 50 beats a minute. So at 50 beats a minute, seems like it's kind of easy, which is okay, but now we're gonna go to 75 beats a minute, and I'm gonna invite you just to pay really close attention when the flams are being played. Pay close attention to what, to each hand that is playing the grace note of the flam, or the first or the quiet note of that flam. And you'll notice that that's the hand, like in the blue and the green rhythm, that actually has to play all the 16th notes in the measure. So here we go again, 75 beats a minute. Let's see what happens here. So one, two, three, and a go. So there you go, that's 75 beats a minute. So now we're gonna go jump straight to 100 beats a minute. And I'm gonna ask you once again, every time that we're in the blue and the green rhythm, pay really, really close attention to, to the hand that is playing the grace note or the first small low note of the, of the uh, flams, because that's the hand that has to get 16, 16th notes in stage one of the blue rhythm, and then in stage, uh, state, was the, the green rhythm in stage one, the other hand has to get that same thing. So let's see what happens here. 100 beats a minute, let's see if I can get this working. So, one, two, one, two. So there it is, that one little thing of just adding flams to every single accent and yet doing an alternating sticking all the way through the grid adds one huge challenge. At least it added a huge challenge for me because I got to be candid with you. I actually spent quite a bit of time working on this one just to get those low 16th notes to carry me all the way through an entire measure and then switch over to the next rhythm. Uh, and I got to tell you, it's, it's kind of cool to see the chops slowly but surely grow, which makes me very excited about it all the time. 
So, and honestly, that is the goal of this video, like every one of them, is just to introduce to you different ideas that you can apply to your drumming, whether you're working on a pair of sticks, working with a pair of sticks on a practice pad, or whether you're on your full drum set. The idea is, did you, did, or the question is, did we hit that goal? Did we reach that mark that we were after, which is to show you some ideas on how to get more creative with just these accent tap patterns that we run through the grid. If we did get this, if we definitely broke a little something loose for you, please share this with other drummers more so than anything else. Because the goal, the ultimate goal, the purpose of this channel is to share ideas and to put them out there so that you as a drummer and as a musician that plays drums can better, can master your craft and become more creative, more expressive, more coordinated, more independent, call it whatever you want, when you grab a pair of sticks and you play on your instrument of choice. So if, along with that, if we did and you're doing that share, which we appreciate, definitely give us the massive thumbs up because it's always appreciated and the huge, huge thing would be to subscribe as well, just because those things are really appreciated and we'll keep going along. But if we did not reach that goal, and I'm totally good with that, please leave a comment down below and tell us where we fell short or where specifically I fell short. Um, I would like to know that because I'll be more than happy to come back around and put together another video that better addresses the issue. And it doesn't have to be that we missed the mark, but perhaps you're wondering, it's like, so how, you know, what, what did you do to get your hand to get all those 16th notes or something like that? Or, or why do you let the stick kick up so high on your accents or, you know, whatever it is. Whatever you're curious about, please ask your questions down below so that we can do what we can to give you better, more information and better information so that you can grow your skills in the world of drumming. So that, my friends, that's it right there. Uh, I am Eric Anderson. This is the Grid Grooves channel where we spend some time with the 421 grid and we apply the 421 grid not only to the practice pad, but also to the drum set, which is pretty much the foundation of the grid groove system. So that's it. I'm going to get out of here for now. Y'all take care, and I will see you on the next video. All right? Bye-bye.